So on Twitch, as well as on YouTube, I've gone on record a bunch of times basically saying that the explosive crossbow is the best weapon in the game, and I've never really explained why that is. And I figured that as part of this two-handed guide series, I think it'd be fitting to talk about what I feel is the best weapon in the game, which is, well, the explosive crossbow. And I think it's important to talk about this weapon in terms of the two-handed weapon context, but also what it provides within its own context, meaning that we need to look at what makes it so great on its own. If you've never gotten to use it before, I'll give a quick introduction on this weapon. The Explosive Crossbow is a tactic survival weapon found in the Promenade of the Condemned. You need to get the three guarding keys, which in turn will unlock all the doors at a certain section in the middle of the level. There, you'll be able to find the blueprint. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description for a brief guide on how to get it, but just keep in mind you need all your runes in order to be able to get it. This is a two-handed weapon, which has two parts that come with it. The first is that it takes up both weapon slots, and that the second slot is usually going to support that first slot. With the explosive crossbow, you have an overhead melee attack that strikes pretty quickly that is the quote unquote support hand, while the range shot creates an area of effect that impacts surrounding enemies. Enemies hit with the bolt fired, i.e. not the resulting explosion, will be hit with a critical hit. So if you look at the stat screen for the explosive crossbow where it says like all the affixes and damage output, sometimes you'll see the damage written out in yellow and that is actually the critical hit. I will be talking about this video in three portions, basically talking about its strengths, what it does well in tactics, and what it does well in survival. And keep in mind, as I talk about the explosive crossbow, the strengths likely will remain the same, but with different arguments support it in its various stats. So with that being said, let's take a look at strengths first. When we think about strength, we want to look at things beyond damage, which is going to be tough with this weapon because it has such a high base DPS to begin with. The main explosive crossbow shot, which is the firing of the bolt, is going to be your highest form of damage. The second hand, which is the melee attack, does not do as much damage, but has several other purposes. These two hands synergize with each other really well and creates a very effective weapon as a result. The melee attack is a quick strike that can hit enemies above you, making enemies like the kamikazes, buzz clouders, bats, just flying enemies much more easy to deal with. The support hand, for example, by virtue of having a quick strike, works really well when the enemy does not have a lot of health left, and you can use that to finish it off. In addition, if you miss, there's a shrapnel-like effect that ends up stunning certain enemies hit by this area of effect. You can then figure out how you want to deal with the enemy from there, use the main shot, use some skills, whatever you feel comfortable using in that situation. The melee attack also has a really cool knockback effect, and that sends most normal enemies and biomes flying meaning you can have a knockback on a rampager with the melee attack and then finish it off using the main bolt fire. I use this constantly because it allows me to be able to take care of certain mobs, especially when you have like a rampager running towards you or if you have a slasher running towards you, all you need to do is just knock them back with the melee strike and then hit them with the main bolt, you're done. You don't have to deal with the terrible enemy anymore. And so the main hand, speaking of which, the bolt fire, has a really long range and it creates a powerful area of effect that damages nearby enemies. This works really well when you have to deal with mob management, and for an attack pattern that's somewhat slow, it ends up clearing out mobs really easily. Rancid rats, corpse juices, and even weaker normal enemies like inquisitors or dog trackers become rendered completely obsolete by this explosive effect. In addition, you can take advantage of something called hang time, which I referenced in my Bone Endless Quiver Guide, link in the description. So because you can get suspended in the air very briefly with the explosive crossbow when you fire that main bolt, you can actually take care of mobs and platforms you otherwise would not have been able to get to just by sitting on there normally, which means that you can either aggro enemies to your liking or you can take care of mobs that you didn't really want to, you can take care of things like inquisitors which have kind of a global range, or even a bulkier enemy which may take a couple shots to get down. You'll actually be able to get some chip damage on them and only need to fire one actual bolt at them to be able to get a kill. It takes care of mobs, takes care of the platforms, it's a really useful effect. And also, you can use things like the wall runes to get trick shots, and who doesn't love swag strats every now and then? So as with most survival weapons, you can get affixes such as cannot be interrupted by an enemy attack, or victims nearby slow down after a kill. The former allows you to quickly rally back your health if you're hit, and the latter, which has a lot of synergistic value, which we'll outline a little bit later. Last thing to note is something that's often overlooked, which is early game prowess. Let's consider early game to be the first three biomes. This includes prisoner quarters, the second biome that you choose, and either the optional biome in prison depth slash corrupted prison, or the actual third biome. Many tactics and brutality weapons struggle early on due to the lack of scrolls and synergy in terms of damage output, leaving you susceptible to getting hit. Survival weapons typically do not have this issue as they have enough base DPS to, well, survive early on while you build your synergy as you go along. Explosive Crossbow has this capability and more due to its incredibly versatile nature in building synergy. This makes both early and late game much more palatable. 
With all of these strengths, it's easy to see why the explosive crossbow on its own is a very good weapon. But what if we were to give it some assistance? And that's where the tactics and survival designations come in. Tactics is right now great for one big thing, damage over time builds. This includes a variety of weapons and affixes that inflict status such as burn, poison, bleeding, etc. And I have a guide on damage over time that's mostly still viable conceptually, but may be outdated in some respects. I'll leave a card so you guys can check it out. Tactics can easily employ two statuses, which is poison and electricity, and in addition, turrets such as the flame turret can give you the burning or burning oil status. Explosive Crossbow makes great use of this through many different ways. First is that you have access to something called Acrobatipack, which is one of the new mutations as part of the Backpack Mutations trio. What this mutation does is that when you fire a ranged weapon shortly after a roll, the backpack slot will fire its ranged weapon for a reduced damage. There's a short cooldown for using the backpack slot in general, but Acrobatic Pack is arguably the most useful of the backpack mutations. You can use things such as the Firebrands, the Alchemic Carbine Throwing Knife, or Hakuda's Bow, and that ends up becoming extremely powerful. It allows you to re-roll your explosive crossbow affixes to synergize efficiently, which by the way, you can re-roll both the melee and ranged affixes to get what you desire. Additionally, most if not all skills work nicely due to most tactic skills giving some sort of status affix. Turrets with the Poison Cloud, for example, work seamlessly in boss fights. You can additionally even have a survival-esque build with using the Wolf Trap and Crusher, which allow you to have more time to attack bosses while making use of tactics mutations. Acrobatic Pack, Crow's Foot, Parting Gift, Support, Tranquility, and Point Blank are all excellent mutations that work nicely with the Explosive Crossbow. These mutations, along with a diverse set of tactic skills, combined with the strengths that Explosive Crossbow already has in a vacuum, make it an extremely effective weapon. Keep in mind these same strengths discussed earlier with the Explosive Crossbow because that's going to become even more apparent in survival. Let's circle back to the victim slowdown nearby enemies when killed affix. This becomes a more and more common affix as you upgrade your forge further and will be a pretty common occurrence by the end. So remember with tactics we discussed the two main status inflictions being poison electricity and with survival that's actually freeze and slowdown. And so with freeze it's good in biomes for a variety of reasons and we'll get back to that in a little bit. Slowdown is really the key here because there's a certain mutation that makes this weapon unstoppable on survival and that's frostbite. Frostbite is on its own a bit of a mediocre mutation, but when you get a weapon with the victim's nearby slowdown affix, it suddenly becomes the most important affix on a survival build. Survival weapons often struggle when it comes to smaller enemies such as the Rancid Rat or flying enemies like Kamikazes because of their attack pattern or the fact that they're really slow, but with Explosive Crossbow, what you can do is that you can kill an enemy with a range shot and watch a bunch of small enemies die or bigger enemies take chip damage from a safe distance. And that lets you position yourself easily and not have to risk getting hit. In terms of freeze, you can get both the freeze status as well as bleed from the bleed upon thaw affix, creating additional synergy. You can also continue to get different sorts of affixes through various skills such as tonic, wolf trap, crusher, and anything else that may induce a status with like a rare affix or something. This is something that's applicable with all two-ended weapons, but the mutation armadillo pack has been a saving grace for survival. This mutation makes it so when you roll, you can parry an attack, and like acrobatic pack has a short cooldown. You can, for example, parry all of the bombardier bombs, or you can even parry the golem's charge while running the explosive crossbow. You also get the effects of the shield, making shields like bloodthirsty, ice, and punishment all excellent parrying options. Outside of Frostbite and Armadillo Pack, you have Berserker which works well with the melee attack from the crossbow. You can pair Armadillo Pack with Blind Fate to get some additional cooldown. You can also use something like No Mercy to make kills come much more easily in biomes. And unfortunately, most survival mutations are made for one-handed weapons and shields, but Explosive Crossbow benefits greatly from what it normally synergizes with. And again, combined with what it already does well, makes it an extremely effective weapon on survival. Everyone's going to have their own opinions on what they think is good and what's not good, but for me personally, I think Explosive Crossbow is by far the best weapon in the game. It does nothing bad, and everything that it's capable of doing, it succeeds tremendously. If you want to run tactics, you have a bunch of options. Survival, you again have a bunch of options while being able to use it in a different context. The best weapons in the game can be used in a variety of situations and be able to stand out on its own. Explosive Crossbow does extremely well in both of its stats, as well as being able to utilize its several strengths in different contexts. 
Thank you all for joining me. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch my content. Next up, I'll be talking about the ice crossbow in a similar fashion, so stay tuned for that in this series. I'll see you all later. Have a great night, everybody, and stay safe out there.